Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to show you how to create two different styles of customised text using the offset path feature in Adobe Illustrator. Let's head onto the computer now and get started. Okay so here we are in Adobe Illustrator and before we start be sure to check out the link in the description to be able to download this exact same template file that we're working from here. You can follow along from home or feel free to use these graphics that we've already created. So this artboard that we're looking at right now has the example of the examples of the kind of customized text we're going to create with the offset path tool in this video. So we can create some quite interesting looks with this very easily as well. Over to the right hand artboard and we have some outlined text already set up here. So this is just to save a bit of time. If you don't have these fonts installed and you've downloaded the file, it's not going to affect you. You can obviously use your own fonts for this. However, we would recommend for each of these examples using something similar to what we have here. For the chisel text example, we're using quite a light sans serif font with consistent line weight and this is quite important. Now the reason for this is because when we create our offset path we want the line weight to be as consistent as possible and it makes it much easier to do this process. That's not to say you can't use some slightly more varied fonts but this is what we found gives the best results when using this process. So let's start with this chiseled text here and the first thing we want to do is is create our offset path. Now if you haven't already do check out our other video on using offset paths at a more basic level and that will give you a good introduction into using this tool for other objects and graphics as well. But to do this we just need to go to object path and offset path. I'm going to click preview. Now this is set to a negative value right now so we're not going to really see anything but if I start pushing this out you can see we are just getting a new path created at an offset of whatever value we enter here. So I'm going to go with 10 pixels for this example. I think that will work well. Click OK. And what I'm going to do is select all of this. And I'm just going to switch the fill to a stroke. So this is already giving us an interesting look. And the next step is just to join up all of the corresponding corners of each character. So what I mean by that is on this C here we have anchor points in each corner and we want to connect them to the offset path version of the character. So the corresponding anchor points we have with the offset path path. So I'm just going to grab my line segment tool. This is probably the easiest way to do this. You could use the pen tool as well and I'm just dragging from one anchor point to another. It's nice and easy because our smart guides will just lock to each anchor point. Now we will be adding lines where we have curved sections of our characters. However, we're just going to focus on the corners right now. Do them first because that's nice and easy and then we'll come back to the corners. So I'll just speed through this and then we'll come back to the next section of this process. Okay, so we've covered all of the corners for our text now. So moving on to the curved area. So for example, with this letter D here, we want to create some intersecting lines on each curved corner. So if you imagine each of these curved areas is a corner, we want to, again, just using our line segment tool, drag a line through this. Now, because the font we're using is very exact, I'm actually going to lock this to a 45 degree angle. Most of the lines we've created here will be at a 45 degree angle. So to match this, I'm just going to click and hold shift and that's going to lock our line to a 45 degree angle. And really, you just need to roughly eyeball this. It's quite difficult to be absolutely precise as to the positioning of this. This looks like this is intersecting this curve at its center point, which is what we want. Now I can just hold option or alt on the PC and click and drag, hold shift as well to lock this on the same plane, drag up a copy. I'm just going to flip this here and then we'll do the same on the corner up here so that will probably do for the letter D and the other two that feature curves are the C and the S so this is the same process and what I can do for the letter S here is actually grab my rectangle tool drag out a perfect square so I'll hold shift while I'm dragging this out grab my direct selection tool and just delete one of the anchor points and now I'm going to rotate this by 45 degrees so again just holding shift that's going to lock it to 45 degrees and now I'm just going to position this so it's centered against the letter S 
bit here and I can just basically move this up slightly and then at least I know that my intersecting lines are going to be proportionally sort of centered against our letter S here. I'll do the same down at the bottom. So again, just holding Option or Alt on a PC, click and drag a duplicate out. And again, I'm just going to try and roughly match this to our above intersecting lines here. And the easy thing I can do from here is select both of these right angle paths we've created. And again, holding Option, just click and drag some duplicates over the C now, align them up to the center and that should work well. Okay, so we're ready to actually start applying some color and making this effect look a little bit more realistic. The easiest way is to use our shape builder tool. So I'm just going to select everything, all of our intersecting lines and the text itself. And with this, again, we want to think about how we apply the color in terms of the way that light could potentially be hitting this. So if we want to give this a slightly extruded look, we want to use color to help achieve this. So what I want to do is color the top and left hand panels as it were with the same colors and then the opposite on the right hand and downward facing panels. So I'll show you what I mean. We'll grab our shape builder tool and what we can do is select our color first before we start doing anything. So I'm going to select this warm color here first and just click on the panels. So I'm just gonna start by just doing all of the top and left panels. Just think about the direction they are facing. Okay, so I have just realized I've not actually applied some intersecting lines to the middle section of the S here. That's not a problem. I can go back and do that now. So I'm just going to grab my line segment tool, I'll align this to the center with my smart guides and then just click and drag holding shift to keep that at a 45 degree angle. And then I'll do the same for the other curve here. Again, I think this is good enough for this example. I'll zoom out and select everything again, go back to my shape builder tool, select our warm color and continue Continue. So what I'll need to do is change the color of this bottom section of the S here as that's now uh, essentially a bottom section. So that's not a problem to go back and do that. Okay, the other thing we can do is holding option is remove all of the lines that we don't need. So I can just click on any of these lines that are overset here. With the lines that we've created intersecting for the curved areas, make sure to remove the section of the line that's going through the middle portion of the character. So in this case on the D, I'm just removing them. We don't want any kind of intersecting line there. So it's the same with the S here. Just remove these sections of the line. Okay, so now we're going to apply our shade color. So to do that, I'm gonna go up to my swatches and we'll choose the light blue in this scenario. Again, still with my shape builder tool selected, I'm now just going to go and click on the downward and right facing panels. So we're just being sure to not touch the inner character that we initially started with. We're just going to leave that white for this example. Okay, so I've missed a couple of the warmer sections here. So it's easy just to change color up in our color options and then go back and fill them in. Okay, and there we basically have our chisel text finished. What I can do as well is I'm just going to select all of it and we still have a black stroke applied. I'm actually just going to round off the corners. When we use the shape builder tool, we can get some sharp corners appearing from the shapes that we're creating with it. But ultimately this is finished. Not the stroke weight if you want to emphasize it more, but a relatively simple process. Now to keep this video short, we're not going to go through the other chisel text that we created in our example, but this is exactly the same technique. All we've really done here is copied our initial text, applied some different colouring here. So we've actually coloured the inner sections of the text and this is a little bit more realistic in terms of the colour and the shading. And then all we've done is apply a shear value to slant this text and give it a bit of angle. So moving on to our other text we have here, we're still going to use the offset path for this. So I have it selected and I'm going to go up to object, path, offset path, or preview and then I'm just going to take this pixel value down to a negative value this time. Go with eight pixels for this example and I'm going to click OK. So what I want to do now is just ungroup this. So when we create this offset path, it's grouped with our original text. So I'm just going to click ungroup. That means we're going to have individual shapes here. And what I'm going to do is go through and select all of our offset path areas and make sure they are grouped. So Command G to do this quickly. Okay, so from here, we essentially just want to have some stroke lines along the left edges of each of these offset 
offset paths. So again, what I mean by that is we want to remove sections of the path on the right and underside of each of these objects we've created here. So the easiest way to do that is I'm going to actually double click on this and then we're going to go into our isolated group and it means we can't accidentally select or delete anything from the characters underneath. And I'm also going to switch to our outline view. It just makes this a bit easier. So just press Command Y or Control Y on a PC and then we just get the paths that we're dealing with. I'm going to go to my direct selection tool and just click and drag over the areas I don't want. So I'm really just leaving the path on the left hand side of the character here. This will do for our letter F. I might take the top point away here and I'm just going to keep doing this going around each of these characters. So in this case, I don't have enough anchor points plotted along this path. So if I delete this top anchor point, it's going to take away too much of the path. So I'm just going to press the plus key on my keyboard, add in a new anchor point, press A again to go back to my direct selection tool, and then I can just delete the top point. And um, we've got our newly plotted anchor point there. I'll probably do the same at the bottom here. It's just curving around a little bit too much for my liking. Okay, so that will do. So what I'm going to do is press Command Y to go back to my normal view. And you can see these paths all have a fill applied. So I'm just going to select them all still in my isolated group view. I'm going to change this to a stroke and we're going to make this a white stroke for this example. And I'm just going to give these a stroke width profile. So the option I'm going to choose is this one down at the bottom here. And that means it's going to taper in at either end. And if I apply a bit more stroke width to this you'll see what's happening a little bit more clearly. Now the problem I have though is that the stroke width is applying on the wrong side to the side I want it to. However we have an easy fix for that if we go over to our properties panel here. I can simply flip the side that the width profile is being applied to by clicking this button and that's what we're after in this scenario. Now we do have a few glitchy things going on here on our letter A and that's just sometimes to do with the anchor points we have. So this can happen especially with offset paths we don't have as much control with where the anchor points are being plotted so you can see here the only issue here is that we've got too many anchor points in this area so all I need to do is grab my direct selection tool and I'm just going to drag one of them down slightly and that will sort that out same issue over here I could just delete one of them but sometimes if you've got curve handles extruding from one of them it can create some issues so just slightly adjust these and that should fix the issue just go through the rest of them and make sure we we don't have any other issues appearing and I think that's all good. And now I can simply double click out of our isolation mode and we've got this quite nice text effect. Now what I can also do is essentially punch these areas out from the text. So I'll just create a duplicate for this. I'll grab all of our strokes and go up to object, expand appearance. And what I need to do is make sure that my text is a compound path. So it's essentially treating all of these characters as a single shape. And that's the easiest way to do this. So what I'll do is go up to Object, Compound Path, Make. And now if I select both our outlined strokes and the text, I can use my minus front option in the Pathfinder panel. And this is now being punched out of the text. You can't really see it because it's still over white. If I drag it off the artboard, you can see that this has been punched out properly. So this is another nice effect. We'll apply a color to this as well. So this is just another interesting way to use the offset path feature with text. And we can create some quite nice customized text fairly easily. Easily. So there you have some very easy techniques to customize text using the offset path feature in Adobe Illustrator. If you have any questions at all, do let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, remember to hit the like button. If you'd like to see more weekly content from us, then remember to subscribe to our channel. Or if you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course, visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time.